So now this video is going to be focusing on this circuit, which is using an NPN transistor as a switch. But uh, first I figured I'd do a quick demonstration of uh, why we do this. So as you can see here with this switch, we have the positive supply there. We have the same resistor coming out of the switch. This is a 4,700 ohm resistor, 4.7 kilo ohm. One's going to power the LED directly. The other one's going to power the LED using the NPN transistor. But the main takeaway is that they're equal value resistors. So the signal coming in is the same for the two of them. And you can see this one is a whole lot brighter than that one. That's because we're using the transistor. We're amplifying the power. So now here's the schematic of the circuit we looked at. The one that was on this side. And the main focus of this circuit is the transistor. So this is the schematic symbol for an NPN transistor. The arrow here indicates the emitter. The side here with the dash and the line coming out is the base and then the side without the arrow is the collector. I labeled them here and so when you take a 2N2222 transistor such as this one this is a picture of one that I have may even actually be that one. I labeled the pins here for you otherwise you got to find a data sheet. These are NPN transistors. There's practically the same resistor but it's PNP format and the chemistry is opposite so polarities are opposite we're not going to go into that now just realize that uh, right now we're dealing with an NPN transistor and uh, the A is kind of extra there's some extra properties to it from just a regular 2N2222 but it's basically the same so that's when it's facing us we got emitter base collector and so on the breadboard it kind of has to either face this way or that way and uh, for this circuit it's easier just to turn it to the right here so now the emitters on the bottom the base is in the middle and the collector is on top and uh, I purposely put it on the the scap here because uh, I know that the base isn't gonna have a power rail connected directly to it there but uh, the emitter here comes directly to ground and so I did put a little jumper directly from ground at the top uh, hole in this area directly to the emitter that one's pretty straightforward that's a good thing to get that out of the way right away and now coming back to the schematic so this is going to be a switch in this circuit and uh, we already have the ground there. The positive side of the transistor, this is the collector. Oh, by the way, in uh, schematics and in text and stuff when they're talking about transistors, they may use Q as an abbreviation for transistor. I don't know why Q, but this is Q1. If there was more than one uh, transistor, you'd want these numbers Q1, Q2, Q3, so you know which particular transistor you're talking about by the number but there's only one transistor in this one so we could have just put Q but I also put Q1 so the uh, short lead the cathode connects to the collector the short lead of the LED the long lead the anode heads towards the positive uh, power supply but that's through a resistor so we're just gonna put the short lead in the same row as the collector of the transistor collector is the top pin there we go so now we got that on there and on the breadboard it's always pretty easy to get directly to a uh, positive or negative and we're gonna make that connection with a 220 ohm resistor and the reason why I'm using 220 ohm is because we're actually using a 5 volt power supply I haven't gotten to that yet and uh, this transistor when we turn it on by pressing the switch even though we're using a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor to turn it on it's gonna turn on fully so it, that's the main point of using it as a switch here that resistor that we're using or any other reason why we're not getting enough power from 
the control, the input, the transistor allows you to get un basically unlimited power from the power supply. And uh, so we'll have 5 volts, the full 5 volts, come into the LED. And so that resistor will reduce the current to protect the LED and also to protect the switch, but the LED would, or the uh, transistor, but the LED would burn out before the transistor. But in case, as you can see here, this is really a switch circuit right here, this, this path here. The transistor, it's off right now. The power is uh, even applied. It is best to turn the power off before uh, adjusting circuits. But there is power to apply, but the transistor is not on. It's in the off mode right now, and so the LED is off and no current's flowing. And so now we're going to come to the input side of the circuit, the input for the transistor, and that's this switch, S1, and this resistor, R1. So I do have two resistors in this circuit, so if I was writing this down or whatever, and even in my verbal explanation here, I could just refer to this one as R1, so whenever I say R1 I mean that resistor, whenever I say R2 I mean that resistor. But uh, uh, we're not going to go into that too much, I can just kind of explain things while I point now. So we already have the switch on there, and one side of the switch is already connected to the positive rail. And uh, the other side of the switch, we're going to use a resistor to connect the other side of the switch to the base of the transistor. So as I said before, that's the middle pin of the transistor. And ultimately, that's how you can control the transistor's conductivity. Different types of transistors have different reactions. But uh, with this transistor, a positive voltage of uh, more than about 0.7 volts and a certain amount of current going through it will make the transistor start conducting and in this case it just fully conducts because we're providing enough current so I'm gonna plug that into the base there and uh, plug this over here and you're gonna notice that uh, the LED came on that's actually signals from my body. I'm picking up noise in the area and uh, I was going to show you how to prevent this uh, false triggering. I think I'll do that in the next video though. So I actually drew that schematic over here. But in case, now we have that there. I thought the power supply was still off. I was fiddling with it between scenes. But in case, now you can see that the LED is off. Even though the power supply is fully on, that's because the transistor is not conducting. Now when I hit the switch, we have current and voltage making of the base of the transistor. We have enough where now the transistor from uh, the collector to emitter, top to bottom here, is basically just like a piece of wire as far as this LED is concerned. It's just conducting fully and the LED is fully on as if there was no transistor in the circuit, as if it was just connected to ground and the uh, resistor.